Greetings friends around the world. This is Dr. Bob Teal for the Bible News Prophecy Channel. Will a great reset come? What's a great reset? Is this something that political, world, and religious leaders have been supporting? What about the Bible? Is it consistent or inconsistent with biblical prophecies? Well, the theme of the latest annual Davos conference put on by the World Economic Forum was the Great Reset. Essentially, it's been proposed that because of crises such as what happened with uh, COVID-19, this is an excuse to reorder the world, basically in a way consistent with certain United Nations plans, uh, Vatican plans, etc. Anyway, what's the Great Reset? Let me read something about it. The Great Reset is an initiative by the World Economic Forum. It's been conceptualized by the founder and executive chairman of the WEF, Klaus Schwab, and has evolved over the past few years. It's based on the assessment that the world economy is in deep trouble. Schwab has argued that the situation has been made worse by many factors, including the pandemic's devastating effects on global society and the unfolding technology revolution and the consequences of climate change. Schwab demands that, quote, the world must act jointly and swiftly to revamp all aspects of our societies and ec economies, from education to social contracts and working conditions. Every country from the United States to China must participate, and every industry from oil and gas to tech must be transformed. In short, we need a great, great reset of capitalism. Now, this great reset's been in the news a lot since uh, Klaus Schwab put out a book last June called COVID-19, The Great Reset. Now, I'd like to read something about it from the uh, National Catholic Register. Great Reset plans parallels some of the Pope's initiatives, but there's a crucial difference. Like the plan's promoters, the Holy Father also believes the global economy needs to be reshaped coming out of the pandemic. Since it first came to public attention in June 2020, much discussion surrounded the Great Reset. A global vision pushed by the World Economic Forum and supported by various world leaders to rebuild society after COVID based on greater solidarity with a more sustainable economy. Prominent backers include President Joe Biden, Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau, German Chancellor Angela Merkel, and Britain's Prince Charles. Each see it as a blueprint for resetting capitalism, a chance to build back better after the global pandemic and has set the world on a more environmentally friendly, sustainable path for which there is no alternative. To achieve the new social contract, the Great Reset's architects argue that the world must, quote, act jointly and swiftly to revamp all aspects of our society's economies from education and social contracts and working conditions. Schwab himself sees the predominant Western-based economic system heavily laden with enormous debt estimated to be $27 trillion as, quote, not fit anymore for the 21st century and in need of reform. Overlaps with Pope Francis's approach. The theme of the Great Reset is not exclusive to the World Economic Forum. Others have called for some form of communitarian reset of values and institutions, including Pope Francis, who sees the pandemic as exposing capitalism's flaws. Having overseen his own hotly debated reset of the church of the past eight years, the Pope has begun a number of initiatives along some of the same lines as Schwab. He's frequently expressed a wish of, for the world to take the opportunity to emerge better from the COVID crisis, including through his October 2020 social encyclical Fratelli Tutti, which the WEF read as proposing a reset similar to its own. Also relevant to his vision for resetting world socioeconomic systems is Francis's new interview book with papal biographer Austin Everay called Let Us Dream, The Path to a Better Future. Francis's vision overlaps substantially with the Great Reset. For to me, it's clear, Francis writes, we must redesign the economy so that it can offer every person access to a dignified existence while protecting and regenerating the natural world. As for the notion of the Great Reset is establishing a new world order controlled by the elites, 
Cardinal Turkson blames such theories on internet sites at a conspiracy theory that used to be attributed to the Illuminati, the Bavarian secret sect founded in 1776, and similar to the Freemasons. Christian also preferred not to speak of a plot, but only a struggle for power to build a new world order. But if such a new order ever comes to fruition, quote, it will be a further contribution to global chaos, he predicted. Now, as it turns out, the Freemasons have pushed for many of the same items that Pope Francis has pushed for, particularly in the areas of interfaith uh, cooperation and uh, acceptance, and have a bunch of other organizations, basically because they don't believe in the good news of the coming kingdom of God, but they prefer a humanistic solution, which is not the solution to problems facing humanity. Now, the National Catholic Register article had this term crucial difference. But what they're missing is that there's a crucial difference, all right? Something is going to happen. It is going to involve somebody from the Vatican, someone I consider to be the final antichrist, and some Catholic writings have warned, Roman Catholic writings have warned, have called this person an antipope. This person is going to adopt much of the Great Reset agenda and push Europe to be reorganized and ultimately he will betray the Church of Rome according to Revelation 17, uh, uh, 12 to 18. Now that being said, there are some Roman Catholic leaders other than uh, Cardinal uh, Turkson who believe that there are issues with this Great Reset. I'd like to read something else from the National Catholic Register. Cardinal Muller expressed sympathy for those sounding the alarm about the Great Reset and called that, that totalitarian systems, quote, have always denigrated any criticism as conspiracy and subversion. The many warnings of totalitarian rule of the 20th century, quote, can hardly be discredited as conspiracy theories since real political developments have proven them right, the German Cardinal said. Blind trust in the Philip the philanthropic attitude of the leaders of the big foundations and open societies is only possible with a completely naive denial of reality. So he's saying it's, it's, don't call this just a false conspiracy theory, it's some reality here. Don't be naive about it. Now there's also some political leaders are, who are opposed to this. Uh, interestingly, uh, related to, at the Davos conference itself, Russian President Vladimir Putin uh, said things that were opposed to it. So let me read one report about this. Putin openly declared his opposition to the brave new world of Klaus Schwab and his Davos crowd. And that means he incurred the wrath of the policy wonks in D.C., Brussels, and London. And that's actually been confirmed in another way. Uh, apparently it was a very difficult conversation that uh, uh, President Putin had with uh, U.S. President uh, Joe Biden. Now, I'd like to read a fairly long piece that I saw in the news today regarding uh, the premier of Alberta, a Canadian province, uh, and this uh, Great Reset. While Alberta conservative pr premier Jason Kenney is adamant that cold, hard numbers of COVID-19 cases require hospitalization, justify his province's state of emergency restrictions. He also has acknowledged that the Great Reset cannot be written off as conspiracy theory, clearly stating that such an agenda will not be influencing the province's policies. Klaus Schwab, founder of the World Economic Forum, wrote a book titled COVID-19, The Great Reset, in which he argues that the coronavirus provides an opportunity to reset today's world so as to, quote, fix the deep-rooted ills of our societies and economies. The pandemic gives us this chance. It represents a rare but narrow window of opportunity to reflect, reimagine, and reset our world, Schwab wrote in the 2020 book, quoting one of his own talks. Schwab's World Economic Forum is known for hosting annual summits in Davos, Switzerland, convening global elites who make plans for how to order the world. Kenny, in a December 6th Facebook Live post, pointed out that Schwab had even sent him a copy of that book. He sent me a copy. I guess he sent one to probably every government leader around the world, he said. Kenny said he would describe Schwab's Great Reset Plan 
as a, quote, grab bag of left-wing ideas for less freedom and more government, for more government intervention for policies that would, I think, create massive poverty, particularly regarding energy policies he's advocating. To Premier called Schwab's annual Davos summit, quote, the biggest gathering of global hypocrites in history. It's a little ski village in Switzerland, and I think every February, a couple of thousand super rich people, a lot of billionaires, millionaires, global CEOs and politicians, fly into Davos with hundreds of private airplanes. They go to Switzerland, spend a week basically lecturing the rest of the world, especially working women and men, about how they should reduce their carbon footprint. He said, the hypocrisy of that crowd is so thick you can't even cut it with a knife. Kenny made it clear that Schwab's theories would not direct Alberta policy. Quote, and so no, I'm not going to be taking any policy direction from Klaus Schwab or his ilk. Now, Kenny was great that from a physical perspective, um, working on the economy, that's something political leaders and world leaders should be working on instead of trying to implement some version of Klaus Schwab's Great Reset. But the reality is that many world leaders, academic leaders, academic leaders, political leaders, religious leaders want to go in that direction. And why is this? Well, as it says in the uh, first part of Romans uh, 1, uh, 28, because they don't want to retain God in their knowledge. And therefore, and let's Continue reading in Romans 1. God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness and sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who, knowing the righteous judgment of God, that those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice them. And yes, they've used deceit for parts of the uh, agendas that they're trying to put in. Now, is this Great Reset a conspiracy? Well, let's go to Isaiah 8, verse 12. Just read a passage there. Do not say a conspiracy concerning all this people call a conspiracy, nor be afraid of their threats, nor be troubled. Now, what's going on with the Great Reset uh, and other globalist totalitarian items isn't so much a hidden conspiracy. It's pretty much out in the open. But it's essentially the result of humanism that's been influenced by Satan and accepted by those who don't truly believe this book. Now, Satan's been pushing an anti-biblical, anti-family, anti-kingdom of God agenda for the longest time. Satan, if you will, is the chief conspirator. It's because he's been behind the scenes. Now, Paul condemned that when he wrote in Ephesians 2.2 2, that the course of the world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. So yes, Satan has been influencing people who do not put their trust in God and the, and the word of God. By rejecting the truth of the Bible, human organizations have endorsed and pushed Satan's agenda, although I don't think I even know that that's what they're doing. Now, the type of reset that Satan wants definitely is not the kingdom of God, but the reign of the beast and the Antichrist. Now, that being said, is a major reset prophesied for the world? Yes. Now, will reset take place after some type of crisis? I mean, that's how... How Schwab thinks it should happen? Well, yes. Now, according to the sixth chapter of the book of Revelation, numerous seals are supposed to be open. The first four have to do with the ride of what's known as the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And these also parallel the sorrows that Jesus talked about in Matthew 24, verses 4 through 8. Now, as it turns out, the opening of the fifth seal in Revelation 6, is associated with the start of the Great Tribulation, uh, Matthew uh, 24, uh, 21, 22, when the beast and the Antichrist are going to reign for three and a half years, uh, Daniel 7, 25, or as it says in Revelation 13, 5, 42 months. 
Well, anyway, for the fifth seal to be open, the fourth one has to be open first. So let's go and see what the Bible says about the uh, fourth seal. This is Revelation uh, chapter 6. We're going to start with verse 7, and I'll be reading from the New King James, which is what I've been reading through so far anyway. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of a fourth living creature saying, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death, and Hades followed with him. And the power was given to him over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and with beasts of the earth. This is talking about a time of violence and death and death by pestilence. A quarter of the earth. Billions of people are going to die. That will be a major international crisis. And that will set the stage for a real reset. A leader is going to rise up. Read a little bit about him, Daniel 8, verse 23. And in the latter time of their kingdom, when the transgressors have reached their fullness, a king shall arise, having fierce features, who understands sinister schemes. Sure, he's going to understand what uh, the World Economic Forum, uh, the United Nations, the Vatican, Freemasons, and others have been promoting. He's going to rise with a small backing. Let's read Daniel 11, uh, verse 23. After the league is made with him, he shall act deceitfully, for he shall come up and become strong with a small number of people. Now he's going to feign peace. Read part of Daniel 11:21. He shall come in peaceably and seize the kingdom by intrigue. Now I want to read something from the old King James. This would be uh, Daniel 8:25. And through his policy also he shall cause craft to prosper in his hand and he shall magnify himself in his heart and by peace shall destroy many. By peace shall destroy many. Yeah, people are going to think he's going to be priest. He's the answer. At a time of a crisis, various crises, you know, we've got the ride of the fourth horseman of the apocalypse. It talks about death by sword and beasts of the field, etc., People are going to be willing to change. We're going to see a reorganization. The Bible predicts one in Europe. Let's go to Revelation uh, 17. I'd like to read verses 12 and 13. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but they receive authority for one hour as kings with the beast. These are of one mind, and they will give their power and authority to the beast. Yes, Yes, absolutely. Some politically minded or motivated people are going to use a crisis for a type of reset. While the Premier of Alberta and the President of Russia are opposed to implementing what Klaus Schwab wants to do as far as a reset, the, prophes the, the, the real biblical reality is that a prophesied reset with a totalitarian leader is coming. Now, while all that sounds bad, there is good news, because after the beast reset for three and a half years or so, Jesus is going to eliminate the beast power and establish the millennial kingdom of God. Now that'll be a time of abundance and prosperity. You know, in Matthew 6.33, Jesus said that Christians are to seek first the kingdom of God. And in Matthew 6.10, Jesus told Christians to pray for the kingdom of God. Yet we also need to expect troubles and tribulation to happen during this decade. And yes, a terrible reset is coming. Not quite the way people like Klaus Schwab believe it, or, or are promoting it, or that the Vatican says it wants. But the Bible says a totalitarian reset is going to come, and we're seeing many pro uh, promoting it now, and when worse things happen than COVID-19, the stage will be set and it will happen. You can believe this not because of what the World Economic Forum says, but what your Bible prophesies. This is Dr. Bob Teal for the Bible News Prophecy Channel.